back, back, back. We are back, 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 back. Okay, so we're back, obviously. I say this at the beginning of every video, so you should be used to it by now. But today we're going to discuss the Symbol Sprayer tool. And this is a useful tool. I originally absolutely loathed the Symbol Sprayer tool. I don't honest. I honestly still don't use it that much, even though I do know it is super beneficial. But I'm going to let you make your own judgment call on this tool but it's really good in my opinion to use I just happen not to use it it's one of those things where you know you should or you could use it but you just don't and one day you're gonna regret not using it because it's a time saver anyway essentially what a symbol is is it's an instance of an icon or some artwork that you placed on the board okay and you can turn it to a symbol and then you can replicate this uh, very very quickly and then you can manipulate it and shift it and do different things to it so we're gonna go over the general rules of the symbol sprayer and its options so let's get started okay so the symbol sprayer is actually right underneath your eyedropper tool um, so that would mean it's I believe in the 12th uh, row first column uh, which would make it, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, that would make it 12, which would make it uh, number 23 in your single column layout. Okay? Now, as is, this being on the, the board, if you were to use it, you'll get this error. It says, please select a symbol from the symbols panel first. And the reason why is because we don't have a symbol selected. Now, I normally, like I said, I don't use this, so I have to bring up the symbols uh, panel. So you go to Window, you go down to Symbols, and your symbols panel will actually just pop up. Now, as is, you have a few symbols that are in here, and you also have some symbol libraries that you're given. If you were to go into the upper right-hand corner of your symbols window, you'll notice that if you were to go all the way down to open symbol library you can select let's say we go to heirlooms and your symbols panel will then change and you'll get an heirlooms symbol panel okay and I'm gonna actually just drag that in there so they're grouped together all right slide our artboard or main staging area over so that if this isn't on top of it and actually let's put it here and slide it over some more okay now I can select any one of these symbols let's select the diamond trillion one and we're gonna click and you'll notice I get a bunch of these little almost outline formed shapes and they look like the shape of the symbol that we selected. But it's just, it's making a ton of these actual symbols. If you let go, and it may take a second for it to load and register. Now we have a bunch of these symbol instances on our artboard. All right. So essentially what the regular symbol sprayer tool does is, is it allows us to spray multiple instances of a symbol on the board, but it doesn't treat them individually. They're all seen as a group. So when you select and you move this or you do anything to it in general, it's just going to shift the entire thing until you expand this. Now, if you wanted to manipulate each individual one, you go to Object, Expand, click OK, and it expands our individual objects. Now we can double click and go inside this actual group, and then we can manipulate our individual objects. We can select multiple ones, we can delete them, so on and so forth. So, I actually want to get rid of all of these and we are going to go back to our staging area we're gonna select let's say this splatter as our symbol which is on your regular symbols panel and we're just gonna click and you know drag a bunch of them out but you notice that 
this is what we get. Still the same bounding box. It sees it as one actual item as opposed to a bunch of different ones. And even if you double clicked and you went in, you can't manipulate them. You can only do that once they've expanded. So now that we have this here, you might say, and let's, you know, get something we can see a little clearer. Let's make this flower uh, part of it. And you can get the symbol sprayer by holding down the shift and the S key on your keyboard. And let's spray a few of these flowers out here. All right. Now we could, in essence, manipulate these without expanding them. And how do we do that? Well, in our symbol sprayer options, if we click and hold down, you'll notice you have the shifter tool, the scruncher, sizer, spinner, stainer, screener, and styler tool. Okay, so we're gonna, you know, do this from scratch and we're gonna go through each one really quickly to show you what they do. So the shifter tool, if we were to click that, it allows us to click and push and it will shift, as you see, the direction of our items that are in our symbol set. If we were then click the scruncher tool, if we select an area, it will then pull inward towards that specific area and it scrunches it. Think of it like crumpling up a piece of paper and the area that's crumpling is the middle of your hand. So it's going inward, imploding, so to speak. And then we have the symbol sizer, which can then change various ones to different sizes wherever it is affecting in that actual radius of the circle of your tool um, then we have the simple spinner which all this does is actually it rotates and you'll see arrows come up these arrows show you the direction that they're rotated in each one has a similar direction but then let's say we take this for instance and we're gonna delete these off the board we're gonna create another spraying instance using these because we have a clear direction of where their gradients are actually going and let's say we then go to the symbol spinner tool and we were to select the direction in which they spin and now you'll see how they're spinning it was kinda of difficult with the flowers because there's so many petals on those flowers and they look very similar but at least with these they have a definitive shape and you can tell one side is longer than the other so when it shifts you can change or see the change in the actual direction so that's the spinner tool it's essentially rotating it uh, the arrows themselves they show you which direction it's actually spinning in okay so you can deselect that let's go over and actually let's select it again let's go over and go to our symbol stainer tool if we were to just click on these you'll notice that it changes the saturation of our actual tools the more we click the more desaturated they become darker how much of a dark stain they get on them so that's what you get with the stainer tool and we're gonna go back to our regular look we're going to click again and we're going to go down to the screener tool. And this changes the opacity or opacity of the actual objects. And the longer you hold it down, the more transparent they become. Okay? So it, it definitely helps you with a ton of variation that you can get from these objects. And then the last is the symbol style. You have to actually pick a graphic style. And if you clicked, You'll notice it says, please select the style from the graphic styles panel first. So, I'm going to go to window, click graphic styles. Takes a second. And then we can click one of these styles and we can then apply it to the actual shape so they're not restricted to what we originally had in our symbol instance and then again if we wanted to expand we go to object expand and now we can manipulate our individual objects once we go into our object group and you'll notice that in your transparency window that you can see the differences in these objects in your window
Okay, so if you were to look, let's say we click this, and we were to look in our appearance window, you'll also notice that it shows you a different type of fill that's also on top of another type of fill. So essentially, it takes the style and it applies it over a color. See? And this is called Pompadour. But that's how you can tell what's actually happening with the styler tool in your transparency window and your appearance window. So these are the options that you get with your symbol sprayer tool. There are a ton of options. Now, you may want to change these actual options. Let's go back to our sprayer. And the way you can do that is with any tool, double click on it and you can change the options that you get with this tool. You can change the diameter of the actual circle that's spraying, how intense it is. You can change whether it goes according to pressure, stylus will tilt, bearing, or rotation. These are things that you've seen in the brush tutorials. Um, if you're not familiar with those, you can check those out. And I explain those differences within there. Um, and then you can change what it actually applies to for the individual different instances that are under the symbol sprayer. And you'll notice the icons change in your tools panel as well as you're selecting the different ones. Okay? And then it gives you also additional information like holding the shift key to bring symbol instances forward or hold the shift and option keys to send them backwards. Okay? So it changes the hierarchy. There are different things that you can do while you're using these tools and they tell you within these option boxes in the little information panel and you can of course like prior change intensity and symbol set density just a various set of options that you have for each individual tool okay and then you can click to show the brush size and intensity as well so we're gonna cancel that out but that's essentially how you use the symbol sprayer it's pretty self-explanatory. You click, you use the tool, the name of the tool will tell you how much it's going to manipulate it or what it's going to do to manipulate it. And if you want to see how strong that tool is, all you have to do is sample it on a symbol instance. Okay? And once you've done that, you can double click on that tool and you can adjust its properties to get it to the exact way that you want it. Very, very simple. So when you get a chance, go back. Review this again, make sure you're comfortable with it, and then come back, fool around, do some things on your own, create some artwork, use the symbol uh, tools, and then check out our next lesson. Okay, so we'll be coming back again, and I'll have some more lessons for you. Uh, we should be covering the perspective grid in our next lesson, but I'm not sure just as of yet, but we should be covering that one next. Um, it should be coming pretty, pretty soon. So. Again, enjoyed this one with you guys. Stay tuned, and I will see you in the next course.